we are back in the year 2009. AMD's, or rather back then, ATI's brand new Radeon HD 5770 graphics card launched. It was one of the first RTX 11 capable GPUs on the market, and that was kinda revolutionary. So how does it perform these days? Of course, we are all aware that the HD 5770 is offering us almost infinite performance. Nonetheless, in the event modern games refuse to run particularly well with it, I will go with plan B that some of you will like, others not so much. I will be attempting to get this graphics card to run in Windows 11 and even fire up modern games with it. Will my modern system even boot up with this? And if it does, what about the driver side of things? I mean, what could go wrong? First of all, a few words about the graphics card itself. This is a Radeon HD 5770 by the AIB Gigabyte. You may love or hate the aesthetics, but one thing's for sure, back then, designs were strange and quite daring to be honest, unlike these days. AIBs had some serious balls back then. The card came equipped with, even for today's standards, not too dated 1GB of GDDR5 video memory. Other than we are used to from GPUs these days, back then graphics cards weren't drawing that much power. What could become an issue though is the lack of APIs such as RxX12 and Vulkan. We'll have to make our way out alive with the X11 only. Credit where credit's due, for back then, besides having fairly standard common DVI outputs, we also had DisplayPort and HDMI outputs, meaning modern monitors won't pose any issues. By the way, we're looking at the good old PCIe 2.0 interface. Alright, let's not waste any more time, let's strap this pixel wizard onto my Intel Z790 platform, paired with the i9-13900K CPU. Very well, the system at first glance doesn't appear to be rejecting this 14-year-old GPU right away. Windows 11 seems to be starting as usual, and after a short while we see a black screen with the result being applied installed drivers. It needs to be said though that this card is hooked up to a 4K UHD monitor. As a matter of fact, for standards back then, that resolution doesn't even pose any problems for this card, it's just that the refresh rate is limited to 30Hz, which is not very optimal to say the least. Once we lower the resolution down to WQHD 1440p, 60Hz are of no concern. In Windows 11, all this seems to be going fairly well and smoothly for now, other than I initially expected. In fact, the integrated driver dates back to November 2015. That's a little bit old if you ask me. Which is why I decided to search for slightly more up-to-date drivers, and because I think of Windows' integrated drivers as highly as p ship. After some mild confusion on my part, to my surprise, I did find official Windows 10 drivers on AMD's website. When going with the Crimson Edition beta driver, we are after all already looking at the year 2016 in terms of drivers. So let's add that to our shopping cart. As a matter of fact, the driver does seem to let us install it without any hiccups, even though this is supposed to be a Windows 10 driver. Well, under the hood, we are looking at practically the same thing, so… Well, I shouldn't have praised the day before the evening it seems. In the middle of the installation, I've had the luxury of witnessing a spectacular black screen popping up. At first, I didn't think much of it, since that's oftentimes considered normal behavior with driver installations. It's just that the black screen shouldn't be there for 5 minutes straight, and usually there is no integrated mouse cursor we can play around with in the meantime. Well, then let's do it the hard way. Let's push down hard on the reset button. And would you look at that, the display driver seems to have installed successfully in the background within those 5 minutes. We are even graced with the traditional AMD Catalyst control center. While we do get an error message regarding our DisplayPort version, that makes perfect sense. The functionality and offered features are not affected in any way though. It sure is kinda cool seeing all these relics of the past here. Obviously, the official slightly newer driver version seems to be running as planned now. So let's get straight into the action, it's time to fire up a few games. Starting with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Due to the lack of DX12, the game won't let us even start the game. 
that was kinda expected, so let's move alphabetically on to the next game title, namely Battlefield 5. While we initially receive a warning right away, the game itself does start. For my first attempt I'll be going with 1080p and low graphics settings. The game does run at nearly 20 FPS that way, to be exact, 17 to 18 FPS on average, and accordingly low 1% lows. Now when we lower the resolution down to 720p, we are dealing with noticeably smoother 30 FPS and upwards, even during battle. I have lower expectations in the game Borderlands 3, first at 1080p as well and very low graphics. The loading screen alone takes quite a while to disappear. On average, we are looking at about 16 FPS. Admittedly, not too shabby when keeping in mind this GPU's age. With the resolution reduced down to 720p, the image quality takes a massive hit, but the frame rate certainly does increase a little bit. We are not reaching the 30fps mark though, sadly. So we are still a fair bit away from what could be considered as playable, I'd say. Cyberpunk 2077 doesn't even want to launch. All we are getting is an error message. Attempt number 2 seems to be much more successful. Well, until the S hits the fan. However, what are they always saying? Third time's the charm, even though this saying doesn't seem to be applying to me today for some reason. With slightly broken hopes I'll try to fire up Far Cry 6. My confidence in today's experiment is getting lower and lower with every game launch attempt now. Due to the lack of DX12 support, we won't be getting anywhere here. Maybe Forza Horizon 5 will treat us kindly. While we do get a slap in the face by that compatibility warning, at least we're given the option to ignore that warning. And would you look at that, we have arrived into the game. Unfortunately, attempt number one seems to be leading us back to our desktop. I mean, I wanted to take a break anyway. Attempt number two seems to be going much better. I can successfully tinker with the graphics settings and set it to 1080p and very low. Almost. We almost made it into the race. Well, let's give it a shot one last time. Just in case the resolution was the cause of the crash, we best lower it nicely. We are now in awe by the now much less sharper loading screen, but end up with the same fate. We are being dropped off to the desktop, the medical term being CTD, crash to desktop. Now I promise you, GTA 5 will run with this beauty of a graphics card. Of course, first things first, full HD with the remaining settings kept as low as possible. Unfortunately, the game informs me I've exceeded the VRAM limit already. So close, so close. But if I lower the DirectX version down to 10.1, I'm slightly below the limit. For that, our game needs to restart. With these settings, we are now diving into the peace-driven world of GTA. As a matter of fact, the game does play fairly well with over 40 FPS on average. Now back inside the graphics menu, me being dumb and blind as I am, just now notice the limits can simply be ignored. So let's repeat the same test, but now with DX11 while ignoring any kind of limits. Now there isn't much of a difference in frame rate, maybe even a little lower, still within the 40s. So how much more can we actually squeeze out when going down to 720p? The answer, a quite sharp image with much easier to spot pixels and around 70 to 80 FPS. Since we do appear to have some headroom there, just out of curiosity, 1440p. By going this step, the image quality looks a lot more recent, but we drop down to below the 30 FPS mark. I'm not experiencing a lot of fun with that kind of frame rate, sadly. Maybe I'll experience that in the title Horizon Zero Dawn. Here we are being greeted by a friendly reminder warning about our graphics situation we have going on. After acknowledging it, the game apparently seems to be crashing even before the game even decides to start. Sadly, even my second attempt leads to the very same result. So I really wanted to know it and tried my luck in Metro Exodus. I mean, I did make it into the menu, or rather the slideshow. Things aren't looking good at this point. So with a lot of patience I tried reducing my graphic settings, but everything decided to freeze on me. The second attempt again requires me to pull out the task manager card and put it all to an end. So can things look any better in the title Red Dead Redemption 2? Apparently not. 
due to the Vulkan API not being supported, the game won't even let us give it a shot. Very well, having arrived in Rise of the Tomb Raider, let's try our luck at 1080p and otherwise lowest graphics settings. Would you look at that? Success! While well, we are below 30 FPS, I am by now kinda relieved we see anything halfway smooth. When lowered to 720p, the game title can be played that way, I'd say. It may not be pretty, but well. I expect a fairly similar result in the successor, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Unfortunately, I ended up being so wrong. At first glance, while still in the menu, things appear normal, but once we load into the actual game, all we see is a black void. All there is are the icons of specific in-game characters. Let's exit the game and retry that at 720p. Sadly, that didn't appear to be the fix. So it's pretty obvious that only very few modern games will behave normally with the Radeon HD 5770. So I've decided to travel back in time. In fact, we are partially going back over 10 years into the past. A game that left a huge impression on me was Battlefield Bad Company 2. At full HD and medium settings, that AAA game from back in the day does after all run at a super smooth 60 FPS. A very welcome change. If there's a wish for more, just set the graphics to low. The visuals now look worse, but in turn we're looking at a very respectable 80 to 90 FPS, which sure is nice. With so much headroom at our disposal, let's give WQHD 1440p a try. At lowest graphic settings, we are achieving plus minus 60 FPS. Hats off. Now to the game Borderlands, the first part. For now I'll go with 1080p and high graphic settings. Without any issues, we are looking at 60 FPS. A very nice result indeed. But what about 1440p? At otherwise identical graphic settings, that's 40 FPS now or slightly more. If we were to lower the graphics details though, we are now playing at around 45 FPS. Visually speaking, not that great anymore. Let's take a look at the racing game Dirt 2. I really enjoyed playing that game back then. I'll try 1080p, 4 times MSAA and high graphics. The graphics for today's standards don't even look too bad, but we'll have to content ourselves with roughly 45 to 50 FPS. Once we lower the graphics preset down to medium, we see a nice clean smooth 70 FPS more or less. At WQHD 1440p, 2 times MSAA and low settings, we aren't too far off from those smooth 60 FPS. To some extent, the HD 5770 was ahead of its time. Far Cry 4 isn't as impressive though. It is a newer game title on the other hand. At full HD and low settings, we are slightly above the 30 FPS mark, but being the fast paced game it is, we require a much higher frame rate. 720p is a lot better in that regard. The average, after all, climbs up to nearly 60 FPS, but the game still won't run necessarily smoothly due to those fairly pathetic 1% lows slash frame drops. Do you still remember the game Saints Row 4? Years ago I completed it. Today I'll try my luck at full HD and a medium graphics preset. As a matter of fact, with this combination I am reading out almost 50 FPS on average, which certainly is not bad. So I'll go one step further and set the resolution to 1440p and turn dial down the graphics to low. The image is noticeably sharper now and we're still looking at over a nice 40 frames per second. The HD 5770 sure can perform if it's given the chance to. Has any one of you heard anything about Skyrim? If yes, I'll not be firing up the original version today, but the more recent special edition which is graphically more demanding. At full HD and low settings, we're heading off in search of mighty adventures. Admittedly, even though the special edition comes with better graphics, I still wished for and expected at least 35 FPS. Below 30 FPS is not very nice and juicy. For the best shot, I'll go down to 720p. To make up for it, I'll up the graphic settings to medium though. The visible pixels on screen now look fancier, but the overall experience has gotten worse. It seems I was a tad bit too optimistic with my medium setting. So let's go down all the way to low. There are a few improvements for sure, but we're not experiencing any wow factor by any means but at least that's a halfway decent frame rate. 
So how does the graphics card actually handle the first part of the Tomb Raider trilogy? Tomb Raider 2013. Full HD and everything else at low of course. Here the HD5770 proves itself, churns out nearly 70 FPS along with super smooth 1% lows. That's a sight to behold. With so much performance under the hood, we could surely game nicely even at WQHD 1440p, right? And I am right for once, that's roughly 40 FPS the GPU is outputting. This still is somewhat okayish in that specific game title. The sweet spot surely has to be Full HD with normal graphics settings. The visuals look fairly respectable that way, and we are almost hitting the 50 FPS mark. A truly great result. This might as well be today's highlight. The final game for today, Trine. Resolution 1080p, graphics details set to medium. Right away, we are experiencing fairly smooth FPS within the 50s and here and there are scratching 60 FPS. So game titles of that kind and overall older and less demanding modern games, this 14 year old graphics card still can handle. The thought alone being able to game with a 14 year old GPU nowadays is kind of baffling and nothing short of amazing. When I first delved into this experiment, I've not even expected in the slightest that the good old Radeon HD 5770 would still output that amount of performance. The limiting factor probably not always being the raw performance, but the low amount of VRAM capacity of 1GB and the lack of support for the most recent DX12 API. Otherwise, this graphics card still packs quite the punch. Not that I would necessarily recommend anyone to go with that kind of GPU, but I do want to make a statement with this, you don't always need to get the latest and greatest. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. and. Thanks for watching.